Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about biomagnification or the long-term effects of our pollution and how they'll build up in ecosystems. First off, biomagnification occurs if a pollutant such as DDC, mercury, or PCB is picked up by an organism and it is not broken down or eliminated from its body. And normally when you have chemicals, your body will deal with them and will process them out over time. But these particular chemicals either take a long time to process out or are unable to process out. And so what happens can be clearly illustrated over here on the right. If we take a look over here at the right, in the water, there's a very low amount of the DDT. And, and that amount is not enough to actually cause problems. And so what we end up seeing is that when we put the pollutant into the environment, there are no immediate effects. And this will lead a lot of people who have a short-term view of things to say that the particular chemical causes no harm because this layer at the water has very, very little in it. But of course, water doesn't stay on its own. It actually gets used up. And in this case, we're going to use it up by producers such as phytoplankton that you see here. And these are small organisms that use sunlight to make their own energy, but they'll also use water. And in doing so, they will pick up some of the chemical. You'll notice that the amount has changed over here. It went from about one and up into a thousand. You could think of this, it's, it's concentration. You could think of this as parts per million. And so we went from one part per million to about a thousand parts per million. That might not seem like a lot, but it's starting to increase. You can definitely see the increase there. As we move up to the next layer, the zooplankton actually eat the phytoplankton. So a zooplankton comes along, eats the phytoplankton, and every phytoplankton that it eats, it builds up all of that particular pollutant. Because the pollutant that is subject to biological magnification does not get processed out. So if a zooplankton eats 10 phytoplankton, which it easily could do, it gets all of the pollutants from those phytoplankton. And that's a problem because as we can see over here, the amount increases from about 1,000 to 10,000. And so we've increased the amount that went from water to producers and we increased it again for zooplankton. Now 10,000 might not seem like a lot and it's probably not having a big effect, but it's really starting to build up. If you look at the pictures here, you can see how spread out the red dots are in water. They're much closer in producers. And by the time we get to the zooplankton that eat producers, they're much more densely packed. But zooplankton uh, don't exist on their own. They have predators and they get eaten by these small fish or minnows. And every zooplankton that a small fish eats, the small fish takes in every single bit of that pollutant. And so you can see here with the dots, it's much more concentrated. We have 100,000 now instead of 10,000. So we're going to begin a tenfold from zooplankton to small fish. And at this point, it really is starting to get pretty heavy. We'll start to see some effects in these small fish. But here's the thing. From the time scale between putting it in the water to potentially, in the case of DDT, kill bugs, until the small fish start to show effects, this could be months or even years. It takes time for it to magnify in the environment. That's a problem because there'll be a disjunct between putting it in the water and when it actually has the effect. From small fish, of course, they get eaten by large fish. You can see how packed it is in the large fish. We have about 1 million, so we've got a lot here. The concentration is getting higher and higher. These large fish start to have effect. And, of course, large fish get eaten by birds, such as hawks or osprey. And that increases the concentration as well. You can see right here how densely packed it is in those birds. This causes serious issues. But if we look what happened, it's a predictable and understandable pattern. We start out at the producer, at the water level, very, very low. There's not a lot of this pollutant here, and it's because it hasn't had time to build up. We can see here at the water level uh, that it's very, very low. There's not a lot of pollutants there. And that happens really at time zero. At time zero. Zero seconds. We dump in that pollutant. It's there. Not a lot of damage done. But as we go up the trophic level, as water is taken into producers, as producers are eaten by zooplankton, as zooplankton are eaten by small fish, and as small fish get eaten by large fish, it will build up. But there's a critical element here that has to take place for that to happen, and that's time. Without time, you will not see this biomagnification process. And so like I said before, people who think short term aren't going to see this, and that's a problem. If we look, this is a food chain. Again, water to producers, producers to zooplankton, zooplankton to small fish, small fish to large fish, and large fish to birds is a food chain. And as we go up from that food chain, we go from low concentration to high concentration.
So let's take a closer look at DDT. Uh, it's a pesticide from the early 1900s, and it was phenomenal at killing insects. You spray the DDT into water, and inside the water, it will actually kill the larva of those mosquitoes. However, it builds up through biomagnification to toxic levels. It nearly caused the extinction of many birds of prey. And if we take a look at this picture right here, you can see that it follows the exact same pattern we talked about before. At the very beginning, it's very low. This one's actually accurate. It's uh, 0.000003 parts per million. So there's not a lot of DDT in this particular uh, water. And, and that makes sense because as you, should, as you immediately dump it in there, there isn't a lot. We don't see an effect. Short term, zero effect in biomagnification. But after a while, that, that water gets used up by producers and consumers such as zooplankton. And we see it build up here to be about per, 0.4 parts per million. At this amount, it's still way too small. You're not seeing effects in those zooplankton. Their, their populations aren't really taking an effect um, until we get a little bit higher. So these zooplankton uh, will get eaten by small fish such as minnows. And you see now we're about 0.5 parts per million. We might start to see some very small effect at this point, but um, not necessarily enough to see an issue with small fish. It just depends on the concentrations that are there. But the real problem is at this point, these small fish are completely inundated with DDT. There's a lot of DDT inside of them. And so as we move from small fish to larger fish, this becomes a major issue. The DDT is now built up in the large fish to about two parts per million. And that two parts per million is enough to start to see an effect. Some of these larger fish have lower amounts of offspring or, or trouble in reproducing. And so we see an effect here at the large fish, but that's nothing compared to what happens in fish-eating birds, such as this osprey. I want you to pay very particular attention to what's happening. Look at the size here. Very, very small. Gets a little bit larger. Gets significantly larger. Nearly doubles in size. And then it almost quadruples in size. You might ask yourself, why is this happening? I mean, it's just one bird. How many fish could they eat? Well, it will eat as many fish as it possibly can get a hold of because it needs food. So it will constantly eat fish for the need to, to sate its hunger. And every large fish that it eats, it's constantly pulling in more and more DDT. Until the end of it, what we end up having is these birds of prey with very soft eggshells. This actually happened to the peregrine falcon in the United States. Um, falcons are actually bird hunters. So what would happen with the peregrine falcon is it would actually eat another level to this. So after you had your fish eating bird, the falcon would eat that bird. This is a problem because as that falcon eats the other birds, it builds up large amounts of DDT. And what we saw was that their eggs were too soft for them to nest on successfully. You see, birds will lay on their eggs to keep them warm, to incubate them until they can hatch. But if your egg smashes underneath the mother bird, then you can't have offspring. Bird watchers and enthusiasts went out. They were having a harder and harder time trying to find these particular birds of prey, the peregrine falcon. And so they started raising suspicions about what was happening. In the United States, we banned the use of DDT. And because we banned the use of DDT, we were able to save the peregrine falcon populations. They recovered once this particular pollutant worked its way out of the environment through dead organisms. And they were able to reproduce successfully. It's one of our success stories where we identified a problem that we caused and then we fixed it. Mercury follows the exact same pattern. If you live in Indiana and you're a fisherman, you've probably been told that you shouldn't eat the fish that you catch. That's not because the water is necessarily dirty with trash. It's more because that water is inundated with methyl mercury. And methyl mercury comes from the burning of coal, which we burn to produce our electricity. It gets into the waterways in small concentrations, and then it builds up through the exact same process of biomagnifications. This map over here will show you areas that are under statewide advisories. Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky, as well as Michigan, are all in statewide advisories to not eat the fish here. And that's because of large amounts of fossil fuel burning. If you eat those fish, the mercury can build up in your system and cause problems. Typically speaking, humans start to see effects of methylmercury at about 50 parts per million. And you can find methylmercury in just about all fish, although it's in much lower amounts in your commercially caught fish. That's why a lot of pregnant or nursing women will be told not to eat fish during that time because they could increase the amount of mercury in their body. Uh, PCBs, or polychlorinated biphenols, are common components in electrical insulators and coolants. We use them a lot in those electrical components. And 
what happens is that they are subject to biomagnification as well. So as we put them into the environment, they get taken up by organisms, they don't get processed out, and they're able to build up to toxic levels. We have seen them cause cancer in animals, thus it seems logical that they can cause cancer in humans as well. These polychlorinated biphenols are found in a lot of electrical components. So making sure that you dispose of your electronics properly, recycling them, is quite important to protect from the pollution through PCBs.